Hi guys, Sci-Fi Recapped here. Before we start, warning. Spoilers ahead. Today, I'm gonna explain a 2007 British fictional heist crime movie called Flawless. The movie begins with a young journalist named Cassie J who arrives at a restaurant to interview Laura Quinn, ex-employee of London Diamond Corporation, about her achievement of being the first female manager in a male-dominated environment. Before she begins her story, she takes out a very rare huge diamond which she stole from the company. The scene moves to 1960 when the young Laura goes to the office and it is shown that the company's size is dominated by men. Meanwhile, people of London are protesting to the company's director, Milton, and his son, Ollie, because hundreds of workers have died because of diamonds. Upon their arrival, they gather the company's officials to discuss the massacre. The young Laura attempts to speak up, giving several suggestions to resolve the chaos, but it seems like Milton doesn't take her opinion seriously. Before Milton dismisses the officials, he announces that Peter Boland will be the newest managing director of the company. Laura is disappointed because she is the most hard-working employee in the company and the boss chose Boland over her. Despite losing her opportunity to become the first female managing director ever, Laura doesn't give up and writes her motivation in a small note. She then comes across a woman who invites her to have lunch together, but Laura politely rejects the invitation and chooses to continue working until late night instead. While focusing on her work, she is approached by a janitor named Hobbs who is amazed with her dedication to the company. She always goes home late and continues working at home. The next day, Laura proposes a strategy to Milton, suggesting the London Diamond Corporation secretly extend their contract with Russian to maintain their relationship and also because they buy diamonds at a magnificent price. It seems like Milton and other colleagues agree with the solution. Just after she leaves Milton's room, she meets Harold Reynolds, an old friend who admires Laura's cleverness and offers her to work at his company, Allied Banking. He tells Laura to consider the offer and gives her his name card. After that, she walks to his office and accidentally finds a movie ticket in the envelope. She goes to the cinema and turns out it was Hobbs who put the ticket. Laura suddenly panics, but Hobbs makes it clear that he is a happily married man. They both sit and Laura is uncomfortable with him as the janitor always reads her private correspondence. He also claims that he has been observing her for a while, stating how she has been passed over in the last three years for someone who was less qualified than her. Laura becomes terrified and almost walks away, but Hobbs finally tells her that she is going to be fired because of her Russian proposal. However, she does not believe him. Still unsure about what Hobbs just said, Laura goes to the secretary's room and lies to the secretary. As she runs to the lobby in panic, Laura searches the room and finds her termination letter. The frustrated Laura accidentally finds Harold's name card and immediately arranges a meeting with him. Unfortunately, he cannot offer her a position as there's a conflict of interests and he also heard from the company that Laura is incompetent. In the evening, Laura is worried about her career and even dreams about her being arrested for trying to steal diamonds. She then meets Hobbs at Greyhound Racing Competition where the janitor reveals his plan to steal diamonds from the company to avenge his deceased wife. He brings her to his place where he explains the details of the heist plan to Laura. He is confident that the plan will work as he has been working there for 16 years. He intends to go for the vault while he is mopping because during that time he works mostly unattended. Laura warns him as the vault's codes are changed weekly and only entrusted to two people in the company, Eaton and Milton. Hobbs knows that Milton keeps the code under his desk, but recently he can't find it under the office desk anymore. Because of that, he asks for Laura's help to sneak into Milton's place and find the code for him. Before Laura leaves, Hobbs tells her that he will keep the stolen diamonds in a thermos. As planned, Laura attends the party at Milton's house. After dancing with the Russian's representative, she goes upstairs and sneaks into Milton's room. However, she can't find any codes under the drawer. Suddenly, Milton comes into the room and opens a safe there. Meanwhile, Laura secretly observes from a distance. After the boss leaves, she manages to open the safe and finds the code she's looking for. The following day, Laura hands over the code to the janitor and demands to know every detail of the plan. While heading to her room, she is shocked when she sees surveillance cameras are being installed at the office. She immediately informs Hobbs about the cameras and where they are placed and suggests they call off the heist. Laura eventually finds another way to get into the vault. She reveals that even though there are eight cameras in the basement, only four cameras are active at one time. Since the images cycle in 15 second intervals, meaning that each image is off screen for 60 seconds. Laura doubts Hobbs can finish the job, but he is optimistic that one minute is enough for him to sneak into the vault and escape undetected. They then synchronize their watches and agree to proceed with the plan. The next evening, the pair arrive at the office and execute the plan. 
Hobbs goes to the security room and begins the countdown after the images are switching. Each step of the plan is done precisely until Hobbs eventually arrives at the vault and tries to open it. However, he is a bit late and the image switches, showing Hobbs trying to break the vault. Fortunately, Laura calls the security room and distracts the guard just before he spots Hobbs. Inside the vault, Hobbs is seen taking the diamonds with his thermos and escapes from the vault undetected. In the morning, the janitor leaves the building with the bottle, but suddenly gets called to fix the clogged toilet. A few moments later, Eaton opens the vault and shocks the entire office, including Laura, when he informs them that two tons of diamonds in the vault are gone. Meanwhile, Hobbs goes home and pours all the liquid inside the thermos, but there are no diamonds at all. Back at the building, Milton tells the senior staff that they will handle the matter privately and immediately hires Finch to investigate the case. Laura secretly confronts Hobbs and demands an explanation as he told her that he's only going to steal diamonds that fit in the thermos. He tells her to remain calm and keep to her routine as they discussed. Laura returns to the office and goes to Milton's room where all the company's senior staff gather. Mr. Boyle, a lawyer sent anonymously, explains his client's demand and then gives Milton a small box that contains one of the stolen diamonds to prove that the diamonds are in the stealer's possession. Not long after, Finch interrogates Laura to find the potential perpetrator and their motive. Before he leaves the room, Finch asks Laura about Hobbs because he saw her meeting Hobbs in the corridor earlier. Afterwards, Laura requests to be given authority to liaise with Finch on the investigation. On their way to the vault, Finch discovers the new security system and states that the surveillance cameras are actually not very secure. At the basement, everyone is breaking the wall to find a hole because Finch believes that the perpetrator must have penetrated it somewhere to get the diamonds out. On the other hand, Clifton Sinclair, representative from the company's underwriters, King's Row, gives £5 million to restore diamond inventories to an acceptable level. However, Milton states that that amount of money is not enough as they are the sole supplier of diamonds to six continents. Finch shows up and concludes that the crime was committed by the company's employee who obtained the vault's code from the Milton's residence during the party. Laura then meets Hobbs in the sewer and tells him that no one will buy that amount of diamonds since London diamonds are the sole buyer. She adds that demanding a ransom is useless as they won't pay. He still refuses to reveal the location of the diamonds, thus Laura leaves and will try to find the diamond. While at her room, Finch appears and asks for Laura's fingerprints. He asks for Laura's assistance in an interrogation, which she agrees to. They both then go to a room where Hobbs has been waiting. Finch interrogates Hobbs, who manages to answer all the questions smoothly. When Finch is away, Laura realizes that she might have left a fingerprint and suggests they negotiate with Milton and Sinclair. However, Hobbs is still confident that they will pay or they will never find the diamonds again. Still that evening, Finch examines Laura's fingerprints and he also figures out Laura and Hobbs's meeting in the Greyhound race. Meanwhile, the frustrated Sinclair contacts a news media company and plans to reveal the heist to the public. Milton orders his men to convene a meeting with all syndicate members, forcing them to pay him or he will crush them. Soon after, he is informed that the press are waiting outside. Milton falls down and suddenly dies due to a heart attack. On the other side, Finch confronts Laura to discuss her fingerprints found in Milton's place and the meeting with Hobbs. He then accuses her of being the perpetrator of the heist. Unfortunately, a man suddenly rushes in, informing Finch about Milton's death. After Finch goes, Laura immediately goes to the restroom due to a panic attack and eventually realizes that Hobbs might transfer all the diamonds through pipes. She descends to the sewer and coincidentally meets the janitor there. Laura threatens him that she will tell everything to the authorities and tries to run away, but falls off. Milton tells her that his real motive for the heist is to avenge his dead wife. His wife had an excellent chance to be fully cured from cancer but the insurance company led by Sinclair were not willing to help him at that time. He finally reveals that he repeatedly put all the diamonds in the garbage bags and then unloaded all of them through the sink. Surprisingly, a huge rare diamond was stuck in the closet, so he decided to send it to Milton as a proof. Back at Sinclair, the syndicates find out about his intention to reveal the case to the public. There, he makes it clear that they will never get the money back and then returns to his room. Realizing that his life is over, he grabs a gun and kills himself. After the demanded money is transferred to a bank account, the lawyer receives a call from Hobbs, telling him he sent another gift to him. After telling the story, Hobbs withdraws his intention to shoot Laura and leaves her alone. Laura explores deeper into the sewer and eventually finds the stolen diamonds. She informs the company's senior staff and authorities about her findings and they immediately retrieve the diamonds. Finch approaches Laura and confesses that they have never found her prints in Milton's safe, but on the opera glasses in his office instead. 
Turns out that Laura also uses this opportunity to keep a huge diamond for herself. Since then, Ali takes over the company and shows the journalists that the diamonds were never lost. It's also determined that Hobbs acted alone in the heist. At the end of the movie, the elder Laura tells the journalist that Hobbs was never found and she accidentally received 100 million pounds from an anonymous man. Before she leaves, she gives Cassie her diary book. Cassie figures out that Laura spent all the money for helping others. Subscribe to watch more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.